I'm Trevor, and in this episode, I will be talking about The Legend of Zelda. All of them. I will try to do all of them. Because I I wish I could say I'm a lifelong fan. Uh, a lot of people seem to think that, especially people that know me in person, because I talk about it so much. I literally, my keys are on a Zelda lanyard. It's, I've had that for like 10 years now. But uh, unfortunately, the truth is, I didn't f- I didn't get into Zelda. I was going to say, I didn't find it until. But uh, I've always known about Zelda. But I didn't get into it until, I want to say, about 2010. Because a friend of mine... Uh, I think I told this story before in my, uh, I did an episode on uh, the console wars and my gaming history. I had a friend who, like, I had a PS2, he had a GameCube, as, um, we were neighbors at an apartment complex, and I was getting bored with my PS2, and he was getting bored with his GameCube, so one day we were hanging out, we were, like, we, we both mentioned that. And I was like, why don't we, I kind of jokingly, I was like, why don't we swap consoles? And he was like, you know what, that's not a bad idea. So we, we did that, we swapped consoles. <laughs> and he had Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. And uh, I was like, I, okay, I never played a Zelda game, but I guess I'll try this one. And I played and beat it. And... Yeah, uh, Wind Waker was my first Zelda game, and I played it in 2010. Which, uh, yeah, that was <laughs> probably not the most expected origin of a fandom of that series. But, eh, everyone has their own story. After that, I played. Twilight Princess, and I, um, I used to emulate games on my computer. I had, um, uh, a bunch of, like, gaming emulators, and I would download, and I'd play them, and so every console Zelda game I've played on, well, not on its source, I've played every Zelda game currently, I've played every Zelda game like main Zelda games. I haven't played um, the uh, Hyrule Warriors games. Um, I also haven't played Four Swords. I don't know if that's considered a mainline game. Mm-hmm. But I also... Um, I've played every game. Every main game. <laughs> um, yeah, the... The emulator came in, especially for Zelda, Zelda 2, and the handheld games. However, the, the exception for the handheld games that I, uh, I when it comes to emulator, is the 360, uh, the DS and the 360 games. I mean, that's 360, it's Xbox. The, the DS and the 3DS games. Um, the, uh, the, the Spirit Tracks and, um, like, Link Between Worlds. I played those on there, um, the actual system, because that's a little hard to emulate, because, you know, the the dual screens. But basically, what I want to do on here is I want to go through the Zelda timeline as hard as that is. Basically, I want to 
discuss everything I know. Uh, not everything I know about it. That's that'd be uh, my longest episode ever because I know a lot about it. I don't remember everything about it. I will say that because I also might get some stuff wrong because I'm me. <laughs> but I want to go down the list of games and talk about each one. Let's see. There's this. Wait. This is. Oh, okay, yeah, I was on the right page. Uh, Wait, how did that happen? I turned the volume all the way down. Hey! I turned the volume all the way down. There should be no volume. Oh, wait, that's media volume. Uh, Ringtone, notification, down, call volume, down, alarm. I'm going to keep that up. There's no alarm coming off anytime soon. Done. There should be... Yep, I just got a message. It didn't ring. Ha-ha! <laughs> Yeah, I just bought this phone. Uh, yeah, it's I just bought this phone. Yes, I uh, I came yesterday two days ago, and I'm still learning it. <laughs> anyway, um, okay, let's see the list of games. Where's the list of games? I can't find the list of games. Wait, gameplay? No nope, game. There's where's the cave? There is there should be a list here. There should be a list of games. The official wiki uh, official the Wikipedia page doesn't have the list of games. Um, like my uh, like I oh here it is history. I'm looking for like a literal like game series list thing. I just had to go to history. So the first game came out in 1986. I thought it came out in 1985. Uh, no, it says right there, 1986. The Legend of Zelda. I've played that, never beat it. And then the next year, 1987, Zelda II: The Adventures of the Adventure of Link. Played that, also didn't beat it. I'm not really going much into detail on those because I. I don't know as much about them. I'm kind of like doing like an overview right now. Wow, there's more games than I thought. Um, and then there wasn't a game for a few years. In 1991, there was A Link to the Past, which is one of my favorite Zelda games. That even, like, it's like a, when it comes to the top-down Zelda games, that one is like the standard. Like, you're basically replicating that one. Ocarina of Time is in 98, and then Link, Link's Awakening... Oh, wait, I skipped one. Link's Awakening was in 93, the original on the Game Boy. It was uh, the black and white one. The same year as Ocarina of Time in 98, they had Link's Awakening DX, which was uh, basically the Game Boy Color version, and it was, uh, well, in color. <laughs> Uh, e oh, I thought this came out in 99. Majora's Mask. Uh, I should probably... I beat L Link to the Past. I have not beat Link's Awakening. Any version. The only... Okay, so I, I haven't played the original Link's Awakening. I've played DX version. I own the, the Switch version, the remake. I have not beat that one. I got stuck. And every time I pop it in to play it, I I I go, but I get stuck again, and I get frustrated and turn it off. And I always tell myself I'm gonna finish it. I'm gonna beat it. I I know how it ends. So like, there's no real spoiler for me. I know how it ends, but I still want to do it, you know. But I keep getting stuck. Uh, and then Ocarina of Time, I have beat that uh, three times. Majora's Mask, I have not beat that. Uh, that Okay, this is kind of a controversial take, and I have, I have had people yell at me for this, but I'm not really a fan of Majora's Mask. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, it's an okay game. It's just not the best. It's kind of confusing. Again, I don't like it that much. I, 
every now and then I will go back to it. Now that it's readily available, I I go back to it every now and then, and I still don't get very far. <laughs> 2001, for the Game Boy Color, we had Oracle of Seasons and Oracle of Ages. I love these games. I can't. I don't remember which one's which. I played them both like interchangeably, and that's kind of how they are. They're you can play them in any. They're this like they're like the same. Not they're not the same story, but like they're connected. And but you can play them in any order. And when you uh, apparently when you when you beat them both, you like complete the story. And the way it was originally designed was there was going to be a third game, so there'd be like a trilogy of games, kind of like the Triforce. But I guess because like the technical the technical limitations, they never got around to doing that. Supposedly, uh, okay, so there. Are rumors that they're remaking Oracle of uh, the two Oracle games? I think that they should go ahead and do the original idea of doing the third game. So that would be so cool. You remake it in the style of Link's Awakening, and so we basically like Link's Awakening. From like I've seen like a bunch of reviews of people saying it's just the same game. They didn't really change anything. They just you know updated the graphics. It's the same game. So, like, they could do that with the two Oracle games, like, remake them in that style, but give us an extra game, because now, we, you know, we've got these two games that we know and love, and we've got a new game to go with it, that would just add so much value, and I would love that so much, plus, like, you know, more Zelda, like, I'm not gonna say no to that. Uh... Let's see. Ah, yes. 2002, Four Swords on, uh, it looks like Game Boy Advance. And uh, The Wind Waker on GameCube, which again was my first game. But I didn't play that till 2009. I mean, 2010. <laughs> um, Four Swords Adventures in 2004 on, wait, what is that? That was on GameCube. Yeah, like I, I don't really like those two, like the 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 two Four Swords games. Um, not really a fan of those. Mostly because I don't really have people to play those with. So I'm sure I'm sure if I had people to play them with, I would enjoy it. But yeah. Also, the same year, 2004, we had the Minish Cap on Game Boy Advance, which is another one of my favorite Zelda games. It's one of the, like, the, I want to say lesser known because, like, sometimes when I'm with other gamers and we're talking, like, they're talking about, like, Ocarina of Time and Twilight Princess, and I'll say, like, Minish Cap, and they're like, what's that? And I'll say, oh, it's a Game Boy Advance game. And they're like, oh. Okay. So, uh, it's kind of lesser known. There was also a rumor that th that was getting remade, but considering how relatively obscure it is i kind of doubt it however there are rumors that they are bringing a game a game boy emulator to uh a nintendo switch online which would be incredible and if they do that i hope they include the minish cap okay so like if they don't remake the oracle games they could just throw them on Nintendo Switch Online if they do the Game Boy thing. I would love that. Either way, I just want to play these games. These games are amazing. 2006 gave us Twilight Princess. It was originally meant for GameCube, but it took so long to make that they they put it on GameCube anyway, but uh, also put it on, on GameCube. I mean, on... Wow. On the the Wii. However, something I didn't know until after I had beat it on the Wii is that to, to you know, Link is left-handed and since most people are right-handed and Twilight Princess uses motion controls, instead of just flipping the character model of 
of of Link or like just like switching it f- from the you know, the left hand to the right hand. They can't make Link right-handed, but apparently they did because they flipped the entire game. The map is flipped. And so if you can play it on the GameCube, memorize the map and where everything is and then play it on the Wii and then get lost because everything's in the other direction from what you're thinking. It's kind of frustrating, but I see why they did it. However, I did I do kind of want to uh I had a game um no, I didn't have a game. I had a the GameCube from that. I had I bought a Wii in 20 12 ish yeah in 2012 about a Wii and i played the twilight i played twilight princess and yeah afterwards i found out about the switch about the the um doing the whole mirroring thing and i wanted i didn't have the game that i had already given that back to him long ago uh he moved long before at that point so like we weren't even neighbors we, we were friends on facebook though he was in a different state um, I didn't have access to a GameCube. I was like, I want to get a GameCube to play the Twilight Princess version. It'd be like a challenge mode. So like, you pl- you play it in on one console, you get you memorize the map, and then you play it on the other console, and it's like challenge mode because it's like, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see, where am I at? Oh, next year, uh, two thousand seven. Phantom Hourglass, which I believe that was DS. Let me see. That is for the Nintendo DS. It was a uh, direct sequel to Wind Waker. Phantom Hourglass was the first sequel to Wind Waker. In the same style, it's supposed to be the same link. Um, I played it for a little bit. Wasn't a big fan. Uh, and then in 2009, the next game was also, uh, I think it was, was it, it's also DS, Spirit Tracks, which is the third, is the second sequel to Wind Waker. I think it takes place like a hundred years later, so it's like a different Link. I don't remember, I, I didn't like that one either. So, yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge Zelda fan. I love Zelda, but, uh... I don't just automatically love a game because it's Zelda. There are Zelda games I don't like. So, apparently that upsets people. It's like, if you're a Zelda fan, you have to love every single thing to do with Zelda. Yeah, tell that to the Star Wars fans. No one hates Star Wars more than Star Wars fans. <laughs> but, um... 2011 gave us two Zelda games. We had Ocarina of Time 3D on the 3DS and Skyward Sword on the Wii. I played Ocarina of Time 3D. I didn't beat that one, but I did like it. I, In fact, the with the uh, 3DS, there, you know, I didn't really experience the 3D effect much because a lot of people are like, oh, wow, I'm playing Mario Kart in 3D. Wow, I can totally... It's like, I can see the depth of the game, and it's so cool. And I'm just like, it It just looks a little blurry because the way it... I just always had the 3D slider off because it never really... The effect never really worked on me. And uh, the only time I actually experienced the 3D effect was with the was with Ocarina 3D. When I was in Hyrule Field, and I was, like, looking at the sky and the sun glare across the screen, and it looked like it was outside of the screen for a second, this little, uh, as the, the sun glare was, like, going across. That's it. That's literally the only time I experienced 3D on the 3DS. <laughs> But like, I tried to recreate it because I was like, "Oh, whoa! Did I just do that? Did I, I just experienced it." And then like I went back again, and like it didn't do it. So I was like, "Ah, oh, okay." I had to not be paying attention, I guess. And Skyward Sword, I love that game. Okay, so like, 
at the time, I didn't see why so many people hated that game. Because like, I see people were like, this is the worst Zelda game. And I'm like, apparently you've never played Majora's Mask. Ooh, I went there. Okay, that wasn't... People are going to hate the fact that I said that. <laughs> Actually, I think uh, like the the list of the like people's worst Zelda games, like people put like Zelda Two on there, and I actually like Zelda Two. I didn't finish it, but I did like it. At the time that Zelda Two came out, they hadn't established what the series was, so they were experimenting. Anyway, back to Skyward Sword. At the time, I didn't understand why people didn't like it. And now that I've... Because I played Skyward Sword before I had finished playing all the other Zelda games. And now that I've played all the other Zelda games, I get it. And I still like Skyward Sword. It's it's a really good one. It's one of my favorites. But I get it. Zelda, like, it feels like it's supposed to be open world. But, like... Skyward Sword is probably the most linear Zelda game. Because, like, I want to explore the whole map, but it's in sections. Three big sections. I can't just explore Hyrule like in the other games. I also didn't like the companion. Fi? Or Fee? I don't know how to pronounce it. She was really annoying. It's like, well, I'll be walking, and then she, like... Randomly comes out of the sword is like, there is a ninety five percent chance that creature we just saw was not Princess Zelda, or was not Zelda. I'm like, uh, yeah, that was a uh, Kiwi Key or whatever it was the. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah, you moron. <laughs> so yeah, uh, but luckily, a lot of people agree with me that she is not the best. A lot of people didn't like her. I actually... I'm going to have to pause the recording because I have to find this post I did on Facebook after playing Skyward Sword the first time. Well, I'm glad I looked that up because... Um, yeah, I digressed a little bit in my search, but it was a good thing. Uh, it turns out it wasn't on my Facebook page. Uh, it wasn't on my Facebook profile. I forgot I had set up a Facebook page for my gaming uh, like a decade ago, uh, 10 years ago, uh, 2012. I don't like wording it like a decade. And so while I was playing Skyward Sword, I this is the post I was talking about. I'm going to I'm going to read this post from March 6th, 2013. Started playing Skyward Sword lately. The game is made almost completely unplayable by the half-hour cutscenes, and even more so by the tag-along character, Fi. I complained to a fellow Zelda fan who said that all Zelda tag-along characters are annoying, but Midna is was the one in Twilight Princess, and I loved her so much that she is my profile picture. Well, at the time, at the time, she was my profile picture. I'm not exaggerating when I say Fi makes me miss Navi. Navi was annoying because of all the hey, listen stuff, but at least I, you had a choice not to listen to her. It didn't stop in the middle of gameplay so that Navi could tell you. Just imagine if Saria uh, could see you now. In Skyward Sword, if if I sees a, a Kikui that Zelda touched, so has her scent. Gameplay will stop so Fi can say there is a 5% chance that this character is Zelda. Then five minutes later she, when she says, I have concluded with complete certainty that that creature is not Zelda. Navi, I'm sorry for everything me and I have ever said about you. Please come back. I'm sorry it took me so long to see your value. Link saw it right away because he went through the acid trip known as Majora's Mask trying to find you. So, yeah, that companion character in Skyward Sword was so bad that that's part of the reason I didn't. I like Skyward Sword, but I didn't like her, so that kind of really brought it down for me. Uh, with the uh, HD remake, uh, not remake, remaster, which I also own, they 
toned it down a little, but it's still, um, it's still there. So, got moving on. 2013, The Wind Waker HD. Okay, so I have played this, but I never owned the Wii U. I have uh, one of my friends did. I was over at his house and uh, he let me. He was like, "You can play a game if you want." I was like, "Okay." Oh, you have Wind Waker HD? Heck yeah! And I told him it was my first Zelda game, and I, we he put you know he put it on for me. And I played the opening thing when like whenever you're like going through the island. Yeah, like I played that. That's all I've played of Wind Waker HD. <laughs> so I mean, technically I've played it, but I haven't actually played it. There's also a Link Between Worlds, which I I played on 3DS, and I was nervous because remember when it was the first announced, it was a Link to the Past Two. That's what they initially called it, and then they changed the name. And I was like, uh, this is just going to like rehash the same story. No, it didn't. Not at all. It was its own story. And it's, I wish they would port it over to a home console or the Switch or something. Because that is one of my favorite Zelda games. I love it so much. <laughs> uh, 2015 brought us more towards Mask 3D and Triforce Heroes. Moving on. <laughs> 2016 brought us a Twilight Princess HD, which I have not played. There's rumors that they're going to bring Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD to the Switch. Which, that seems likely. I hope they do. I would definitely buy those. Especially for Wind Waker. That one is... Because, because it's my first Zelda game, it means more to me. So, like, I'm a little biased. It's like, I like that one more than Twilight Princess, but they're both great games. But I like Wind Waker a little more because of what it means to me. It was my first Zelda game. 2017, nothing happened in 2017, Zelda-wise. It was a completely blank year. I don't know why they listed it on here. Okay, just kidding. Breath of the Wild, which I know it's going to sound cliche, but it is my favorite Zelda game. It's like... It's like a soft reboot, but also continuing the story. Um, I will come back to that. I want to talk about the timeline at some point. Uh, let's see. 2019, Link's Awakening. I already talked about that. I own that. 2021, Skyward Sword HD. I I do own that. I. Oh. Wow, that was a motorcycle that went by. I own... I believe three Zelda games, the physical edition, Breath of the Wild, Link's Awakening, and Skyward Sword. I I hope those are the only three I own because if there's a fourth one there and I'm not seeing it, that'd be awkward. I go and like, oh, I own. I keep meaning to buy Hyrule Warriors: Age of Calamity, but I never I never get it. And then uh, there's 2023 Untitled Breath of the Wild sequel, which. You know, I own that one. I played and beat that one. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, not even out yet. Don't even have a title for it. <laughs> okay, now that I've gone over the release order of the games and kind of my history with it, I want to talk about something a little more controversial. The Zelda timeline. I remember for the longest time there wasn't an official timeline. In fact, it seemed like Nintendo was deliberately avoiding it. It's kind of like how Pixar denies the Pixar theory or like they ignore it. It's like it's not a real thing. Nintendo was like with the Zelda theory, with the Zelda timeline. <clears throat> and then they released Hyrule Historia, which I did buy a copy of, and they had an official timeline and and it was a little controversial because there was a split timeline and I'm not going to get into the whole history. I'm just going to go over, um, there's, I've got an updated one here because the one in the Hyrule Historia is a little old. This is a fan made one, a fan updated one from 2020. Uh, let's see who is, I want to credit the person who made this because I don't want to just take it. Let's see. 
it's on Pinterest. So I should probably just find, we can't find that idea. So, um, yeah. Um, I'm not seeing the person who made this. So I kind of feel bad for just not, okay, well, some fan made this and I have no way of crediting them. So yeah, <laughs> I tried. Oh, wait, maybe I can look on the image. Compile. Oh, there is a name <laughs> on the image itself. Compiled by, uh, it's Japanese. Uh, uh, Hen Henrico Magnifico. Something tells me it's a fake name, but it's a username, if anything. Oh, youtube.com forward slash Henrico Magnifico. And then at Henrico the Great. So. That's who compiled this. Actually, I am going to look them up on Twitter. Henry Gunero. I gotta go back and look. Henrik O the Great. There they are. I found them on Twitter. I am following them on Twitter. If you are Henrico Magnifico and you're listening to this and you got a follow from The Digressor on Twitter, that was me and you just heard me live doing that even though it doesn't make since because I oh they're they're still active because they they they're sharing things from like four days ago. Anyway, so back to the timeline. Gonna edit a lot of that out. <laughs> so the first game in the timeline, I'm gonna use. Okay, so the person who made who compiled this timeline, they were very helpful because they put a lot of things on here that the original. Did not. Um, it did, and the original, they just put the the game the games listed, and yeah, the uh, the new updated one has a little more context. Uh, so Skyward Sword is the first in the timeline. And it talks about the creation and everything and the origin of the curse that goes down the line so that the, I, I don't know if it's the descendant of Link and Zelda, like Zelda's descendants and Link's descendants. If like every Link and Zelda are related to each other. Well, I'm sure the Zelda ones, I'm sure every Zelda is related to each other because it's, you know, the royal family. I don't know if every link is related to all the other links. Also, um, stop naming your children Link and Zelda. It only leads to disaster. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> the second in the timeline is the Minish Cap. And the sec the third is the Four, Four Swords, which apparently is canon. I didn't even notice that. Because Minish Cap says the rise of the evil Vahati. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Four Swords is the resurrection of Vahati. I'm guessing that's the... Oh, and there's a bunch of eras in between Skyward Sword and Minish Cap. It says, like, the Sky Era, the Skyward Sword, Era of Chaos, and then Era of Prosperity. And then Minish Cap is in the Force Era. And an era of the hero of time. That's Ocarina of Time. Then this is the game that 
lead, that led to the split in the timeline. Two of the timelines actually make sense. There's the adult timeline. If you've had, if you've never played Ocarina of Time, basically, when you get to the Temple of Time, because you start off as Child Link, you get to the Temple of Time and you reach for the Master Sword. You jump ahead seven years because apparently uh, it's too powerful for a child, so you're sealed away for seven years. In that time, Ganon has taken over and everything's ruined and and not so good. So the adult timeline is... You know, Ganondorf is sealed. Like at the end of the game, you defeat Ganon, and that 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 the adult timeline is that. But then at the end of the game, you um you go back in time. Uh, Zelda sends you back in time to when you're a child, and you're able to stop Ganon because like before he even gets to the point that if you can like report him and be like oh hey it kind of implies that because in uh whenever you first see zelda like she's looking into a window and you see ganon ganondorf i don't uh i don't remember like the order like if he's ganondorf and then he turns into ganon or if he's ganon and turns into ganondorf it's 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 weird i See, I I know a lot about Zelda, but I know so much, and I am not good at remembering things offhand. So, like, yeah, like I know all this info, just not the correct order, <laughs> you know. Uh, anyway, so yeah, in the at the end of Ocarina of Time, you go back at, to that moment with the knowledge that you have and you're able to stop him before he's able to to do what he does. And so the sacred realm remains protected and yeah. I'm uh the third timeline which I'll come back to that. I'm going to go through the adult era timeline where Ganondorf is sealed the uh the hero of winds and the new world. That's the adult timeline. It. I've never really actually paid attention to what games are in which one. Um, the adult timeline only has three games. Wind Waker, Phantom Hourglass, and Spirit Tracks. It, uh, it starts the era without a hero. Ganon is resurrected. Hyrule is sealed, then flooded. That's kind of the plot of the Wind Waker. They uh, Ganondorf is resurrected, and they seal him away, and but then they f they they flood Hyrule to protect it because you know logic. <laughs> and then the Wind Waker Ganondorf is resurrected, and then he's defeated. Uh, it's era of the Great Sea, and then the next era is Era of the Great Voyage. A new continent is discovered. I think that's what happens in Phantom Hourglass. Or, no, I don't remember. I See, I didn't beat that one. I'm not entirely sure what happens in that one. But, yeah, you're sailing more in that one. And uh, there's like a new continent is discovered. New Hyrule Kingdom is founded. Era of Hyrule's Rebirth. And then in Spirit Tracks, it's a whole new Hyrule, whole new continent. So, yeah, that's the end of the adult timeline. And then in the child timeline, the next game is Majora's Mask because obviously it starts off with him as an adult, as a child. So it's a continuation. That's what I was talking about in that post where I apologize to Navi where Link saw her value and she goes missing in the woods and he goes looking for her. And that's how that game starts. It doesn't say he's looking for Navi, but it says he's looking for a friend. And so everyone just kind of assumes he's looking for Navi. And it says the demon thief Ganondorf is executed. But then the twilight era comes and we got the twilight princess, the shadow invasion, which yeah, Ganon was a surprise villain on that one. Where like the, I forgot who the uh, to me it was a surprise, and I played it. 
I see, when I was playing these games, I don't like spoilers. So like I know like I see a lot of people are like I was just waiting for Ganon to pop up because I knew that because they had like another person as the as the villain for most of the game. But then it's revealed he's actually just a puppet for Ganon at the end. And a lot of people were like, oh, I saw that from the beginning. It's so obvious. I'm like, well, I, I'm a moron. You know that? So, Ganon is the surprise villain. Oh, yeah, spoiler. <laughs> and then you got the Shadow Era after the Twilight Era. You got the Four Swords Adventures, the reincarnation of Ganondorf, and the resurrection of Vati. There he is. And that's the end of the child timeline. The most active one, the most active timeline is the third one, which I always thought was a little weird. It's called the Hero is Defeated timeline. So basically, it's if in the final battle between Link and Ganon, Link is defeated. This is that timeline, which... I think it's kind of, it's kind of a pointless timeline because like you're saying every time Link dies in every game it splits into another timeline. Why is this one focused on? Why is this cuz like he dies in every game cuz every time you die it's like you're you're starting a new timeline. But anyway, there's the most games in this the I never noticed before, but the adult and child timelines both have three games. This one has seven. Starting with uh, the decline of Hyrule and the last hero, the imprisoning war. We got a link to the past, the resurrection of Ganon. Wait, if the hero was defeated, how would Ganon need to be resurrected? Wait. Era of Light and Dark. Yeah, that's that's this era. We got fo That's followed by Link's Awakening, Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons, and uh, oh, Resurrection of Ganon again. That's Oracle of Ages and Seasons. And then the Link Between Worlds is another Resurrection of Ganon. He's resurrected three times, and you haven't even defeated him because you're the hero and you were defeated. And then... Um, the era of light and dark end with Triforce Heroes. That's five games in one era. And then you got the golden era. The monarchs of Hyrule use the Triforce. And you got the era of decline, which is the furthest in the timeline of the three timelines. You get the tragedy of Princess Zelda the first. They got The Legend of Zelda, the original Zelda, The Resurrection of Ganon, again, and uh, The Adventure of Link. The Resurrection of Ganon is prevented. He's resurrected so many times. So we got The Era of the Sheikah. You're probably wondering which timeline... It, oh, I thought I... Uh, which timeline is... Breath of the Wild in. Now, this is where it gets complicated because fans are still debating to this day where it lands. And Nintendo is just like, yep. Okay, so people ask Nintendo, where does it fall in the timeline? And Nintendo's response is yes, basically. <laughs> and um, I believe it was MatPat from Game Theory that presented a solution you know, that's somebody on YouTube. Some YouTube. There's a lot of theorist channels, and the main one is MadPat. So I just assume it was him. If it wasn't him, it was someone else. I'm sorry. I'm going to give him the credit. Basically, in Hyrule Warriors, I never played that. I've never played that game. I'm just going off of. My plot description is solely based off of what I saw in this video. Also, I also must say, Nintendo is insistent that Hyrule Warriors is not canon. However, Age of Calamity is, because it's a prequel to Breath of the Wild, but it's also a Hyrule Warriors game. But the first Hyrule Warriors is not canon, according to them. 
but it would help them out so much because from what I remember from that video, the plot of Hyrule Warriors is there is like a sorceress or some somebody. She opens up a portal and like brings in like every like all these characters from different realities, basically the three timelines into like this one area so that they can all fight. And that's basically how they, you know, they set up the game so that you can play any, any Link in Zelda and fight any enemy across any of the timelines. And that's their excuse. It's just, oh, she's mixing the realities. And that's your solution. That's the answer. Because according to the video I saw, if you were to make that game canon, you can just say that that made the timeline collapse into one. So, because in Breath of the Wild, there's elements from all three timelines. So that would make sense if Hyrule Warriors was canon. And when she did that, she merged the timelines so that Breath of the Wild was possible. Plus, if I remember correctly, it set 10,000 years after the previous game. It's so like the... Um, I think like the oldest, like the furthest in the timeline of, uh, on any of the timelines was Zelda 2 Adventure of Link. Breath of the Wild takes place 10,000 years after, which is a massive gap. So, yeah, that's plenty of time. They could, uh, they could just easily say that like that's what happened. Hyrule Warriors happened, merged the timelines, and that's how you get Breath of the Wild. But they're insistent. Hyrule Warriors is not canon. <sighs> I haven't beat Breath of the Wild. I have fought Ganon. I did not win. I came really close, and then he he defeated me. I I I, I, I um did all four of the Divine Beasts, so it took half his health, which was a major help. I did see a video somebody posted on YouTube, and I want to try it. But now that I've actually been to the castle, I realize how hard that this would be. Basically, they took one of the cuckoos, the chicken. They walked it all the way to the castle and took it to Ganon and threw it at him. And he, you know, every time he hit, he would hit the hit the chicken and the cuckoos would come, all the chickens would come and attack him, and they killed Ganon with the chicken. Because even Ganon can't defeat the chickens. And that's like the coolest way. I love, I love what they did with this game. Because I, Nintendo actually listens to fans sometimes. Because the previous game, the game before Breath of the Wild, like, original game because there were like remasters and stuff remakes was um skyward sword and the big complaint was it's so linear and they're like they want you to play the game they wanted you to have like they have a set story and they have a certain way like you have to do everything exactly the way they wanted you to do it and it's so linear it holds your hand the whole time it's still a fun game but it didn't feel like Zelda. And this one, they went the complete opposite direction. They, You wake up in the thing, yeah, in the little sleep chamber, and they're like, okay, good luck, have fun. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> if, you know, once you leave the plateau, you can head straight to the castle with a stick if you want. I don't know if anyone's defeated Ganon like that, but... If you want to do it, you can do it. And that's what I love about Breath of the Wild. I've seen so many creative things. Like people have found so many creative ways to play that game. And like the way uh, ways to like use the given mechanics to like defeat enemies in ways I hadn't even thought of. And Nintendo lets you. Like 
whatever, like the way, <laughs> whatever you think, like you can basically do whatever comes to mind in that. And it's, it's so cool. Like, and I'm so excited for Breath of the Wild 2, whatever the name is. I know they're not going to call it that. The Except for Zelda 2, there hasn't been an, an actual numbered sequel. Technically, Zelda 2 is, is called the um, the Adventure of Link, but it's Zelda 2, so like that doesn't really count. But like, imagine if they did suddenly number it. It's like, Legend of Zelda, 16. Like, uh huh? Honestly, with Breath of the Wild, I kind of was disappointed at the name at first. Because I was hoping, because the way they announced it, they were like, it's we're going to rethink the conventions that make a Zelda game. And, you know, uh, Miyamoto, like, there was the, that, like, he was standing in front of a TV screen and it was like, oh, see that mountain way off in the distance? You can go there right now if you wanted to. Yeah, and so, like, I was hoping that since it's technically, like, a soft reboot for the series, they would just call it The Legend of Zelda. But then, like, so, during the uh, reveal trailer, it like, the name The Legend of Zelda popped up. I'm like, yes! And then, like, the the words Breath of the Wild, like, dusted in, onto the screen. And I was like, oh, there's a name. That's a that's a stupid name. Why, that doesn't even sound like a Zelda title. Of course, it's grown on me since. But someone pointed out to me because I did I did complain to a friend like it's stupid they didn't just call it Legend of Zelda and they were like yeah there's already a game called that and it would be so confusing. Like there are three movies called Halloween, the original, the Rob Zombie reboot, and the second reboot that was a sequel to the first one in 2018. There's three Halloweens. Like I'm watching Halloween. Which one? Ha! <laughs> so, it does make sense they didn't just call it The Legend of Zelda. But I do wonder what they're going to call the next Zelda game. Part of me wonders if I should just not do this episode yet. Like, not record it until... Because supposedly there's supposed to be a direct next week. And I don't want to do this episode and be like, oh yeah, there's going to be, uh, you know, that'd be cool if they did this and this. And then like, obviously I'm not going to post this episode for a month or for, I don't know when I'm going to post it, but yeah, like I would hate to ha record this, say everything that I've said, like, oh, that'd be cool if they, they did, you know, they remade Oracle, the Oracle games. And then like, they announce, they announce it, and then like I post it, and it's like, oh, that'd be cool if they did that. So supposedly there's going to be a direct next week, and they're going to announce Zelda stuff. So I'm actually going to stop recording this, and I will pick it up after the direct drops. Okay, it's actually. A couple of days later, the next day, they announced the direct. So it wasn't the next week; it was the next day, and yeah, um, not much came from that direct. Uh, but we did get a title for the new Zelda game, Tears of the Kingdom, and apparently, some people thought it was Tears of the Kingdom, which. I, I don't know why people would think that. Uh, Tears of the Kingdom makes more sense. <laughs> um, but anyway. I still don't really know what this game's going to be about. Because that first teaser they gave us a couple of years ago. Or a few years ago at this point. Made it look like it was going to be set underground. Under Hyrule. And now the like all the new stuff is like in the sky. And there's an area that looks like Skyloft, and I'm and I'm like I don't know what to think of this game. Is I I don't know because it's the only thing I can think that's comparable to this is Majora's Mask because not that it's going to be like Majora's Mask. The reason I say that is because we had Ocarina of Time, and then they use like the same engine, the same assets, and everything to make Majora's Mask, and it was a direct sequel to that. 
And so, I mean, this is basically the same scenario where it's there's not very many Zeldas get a direct sequel. I Zelda Two Link, uh, Link's Adventure, uh, Adventure of like, Crap. I think I can think of the name right now. But anyway, Zelda Two is like the, obviously the first direct sequel, and then um, yeah, Majora's Mask, and they get the Oracle games, which don't. I don't know if they count as sequels because, like, which one would be first? Because you could play them in any order. Um, Link to the Past and Link Between Worlds, but that came out like 20 years later. I hate wording it like that. <laughs> but yeah, um, this isn't a normal thing. So when they announced Breath of the Wild 2, actually, we've been calling it Breath of the Wild 2. Nintendo has been calling it Sequel to Breath of the Wild. So I was like, I, I knew they weren't going to call it Breath of the Wild 2. People were like, it's Breath of the Wild 2. Why are they naming it that? They're not. It's a placeholder, and we're the ones calling it that. The only two is Zelda 2. In fact, that when they announced um, Link to the Past sequel, Link Between Worlds, they called it Link to the Past 2. It was actually called that, like, on the teaser, on the announcement. And I was like, no, I don't like the title. And then they announced Link Between Worlds, and I, I hate this, but I, okay, I like, I really love Link Between Worlds, and I know that's, you know, that's not a controversial take, a lot of people like that game, but I, 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 as much as I love Link to the Past, I think I prefer Link Between Worlds. I wish that was available like elsewhere it was i wish it was ported because it's such a great game and now you can't really play it i had a i've had a 3ds but like they closed the e-shop so you can't buy it you have to like have the physical copy and i don't nintendo's the only console i do physical copies of i think i've i don't remember what i've said previously on this episode but yeah um the the new game is Tears of the Kingdom, and it's coming out in April, I think. I literally just hit record, and I didn't... I did my thing and didn't research anything. Um, I'm looking real fast, and I'm stalling while I'm talking. Tears of... Tears for Fears. That's, that's an 80s group. Tears of the Kingdom. It's not... Sh oh, there it is. It took a minute to load. It is coming out May 12th, 2023. Anyway, that's the that's the end of the Zelda episode. Uh, have a good... <laughs>